Good morning. We're in my lounge, uh, garage turned lounge. Very fun. Um, and I want to talk about the lost troubadours of the early 70s and late 60s. And these were mostly men who would kind of sit in a stool with a guitar and tell a story. And you would really be caught up into the verses and the actual storytelling and the characters. And this was a popular format, like I said, maybe from 67 to 75. And um, we're going to start with a song called Honey, I Miss You. Um, this guy, I've never heard of him. His name is Bobby Goldsboro. But he was famous, and he was sitting on the number one song in the world in 68. Honey, I Miss You, it's a very sad song um, about a uh, young lady who passes away, and the the husband is remembering you know, the good times and the silly times. And sometimes the lyrics are a bit silly in these songs as well. It is what it is. It's part of the genre. Um, so start with that one, Honey, I Missed You. And I thought it was an Andy Williams song because he covered so many tunes. And I grew up with my parents would listen to Andy Williams would interpret everything from like the Beatles to, you know, Elvis. So Bobby Goldsboro, um, then he had this other hit called Summer, kind of controversial. It was about an older woman with a 17-year-old young man um, having their first affair. I don't know if it would fly today, but hey, it was the 70s. And um, it's kind of a dramatic, odd song. It was um, kind of his last hit. And he faded into obscurity. I'm not sure why. Um I think by 76, disco and punk and later new wave kind of wiped out this whole genre of the sensitive um, storytellers. It, it was considered passe at the time. I mean, now it's all come back. Now it's all like, you know, hidden treasure and gold. But um, he was very earnest and sincere and he had kind of like this, um, oh, feathered hair, you know, and these, he would sing on these sound stages that were very dramatic with all kinds of blocks and rectangles and staircases going to nowhere and, um, you know, dramatic lighting. <laughs> I find myself just looking at the sets. <laughs> like, where does that staircase go if you go up there? It goes nowhere. That's not the point. You're supposed to be contemplating on Bobby Goldsboro. And he wore like leisure suits with the wide collars. He was just that early 70s dude. It was just quintessential. That's just how it was at the time. And I'm sure he ended up in Vegas or Branson, Missouri, um, doing his act and uh, or smaller clubs. Uh, but the times did change and washed him away in the pop tides. Um, and um, another person would be like um, Albert Hammond. He had this huge hit called It Never Rains in Southern California. It's a very sad song, really, about a guy who tries to make it in show business and, and, and fails. And he... It's not clear if he dies or what happens in the song, but some of these have a touch of mystery. They don't really tell you what exactly happens. It's up to you to figure it out. Um, and he had another hit called 99 Miles from L.A. I'm not quite sure what that one is about, but it's also elusive and about some guy 99 miles from L.A. <laughs> you have to dig into the lyrics and contemplate them. And then he just faded away, too. I, I mean, these people seem to have disappeared. Ah, there's my trash truck right on cue while I'm filming. Ah, yes, the universe likes to play with me. <laughs> but we're going to just let it be an amusement. Um, 
And so he had two hits, Albert Hammond, and then just, like I said, kind of disappeared into the mist. That's the puzzling aspect to me, that these people didn't seem to have revivals like they do now. Like someone like Cyndi Lauper, like never really goes away. She just keeps coming back and on commercials or reality shows, or they kind of recycle everyone now over and over. But this group of earnest young men kind of had their moment. And a lot of the songs were very sad and just kind of passed on. That's why I want to, um, kind of show you through the mist, this little patch of Island here. Um, another person would be Andrew Gold. He had this song called Lonely Boy and really good story. A lot of us could probably relate to and, uh, about being an only child. And then you have a younger sibling and, uh, Great melody, lyrics, and vocals. He really pounded it out and with kind of a quiet anger. And then that was it. I mean, he did the big TV shows at the time and the talk shows. This was before music videos. So um, you have to kind of find these uh, late night talk shows. And the only thing I know about him is he came back later with Golden Girls. He wrote the theme for that song that show. And that's one of the best themes out there. I mean, everybody loves the golden girls theme and he wrote it, Andrew gold. Uh, so there's a few other one hit wonders, you know, that kind of came and went, um, Bobby Gentry, a female in this genre had this huge storytelling hit with, um, Ode to Billy Joe. And like, why did he jump off that bridge? And, what was the secret and was there a gun or a baby or it's all very mysterious, this Southern Gothic tale. And she really got into character and it was really creepy and had this brilliant song. It just owed to Billy Joe and just wonderful finger guitar picking. And she had this Husky kind of Mississippi persona. And that was the style of the times. It was really popular and she had other hits as well, but, that was the big monster. I mean, <laughs> and it became a movie and with Robbie Benson, uh, one of these sad, you know, mysterious films of the seventies, it was a genre. Um, Glenn Campbell was probably the most successful of this ilk. Um, he had hits like by the time I get to Phoenix, which really drew you into the characters and, uh, the lives of these people. It drew like sketches and portraits of everyday people like us. And the Wichita lineman is still on the line. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that do hard jobs, like up on the telephone pole lines, uh, working on cold winter mornings and stuff. And I think it really hit a chord with songs about blue collar America. You may not hear much about these lives. And I think Glenn Campbell did it the best and uh, he has several others and he had a long career. He started with the Beach Boys and in the late seventies, he actually scored a big hit during disco. It was called Southern Nights. So <laughs> here disco is dominating the charts, but he came blasting through with the pop song. So good for him. Southern Nights is a, is a wonderful song. It's a, kind of like a classic. So he had the talent to, have his career go on longer. He had more hits, which meant he could have a big greatest hits record and sell more copies and do more touring. And uh, so definitely dig into those singers and artists. And uh, there's more. I mean, I might have to do another um, series on this because they're very dramatic and introspective. And the seventies was a time before social media where it was called the me decade where people really kind of looked into themselves and did a lot of introspection and contemplation and who am I and what am I doing on this planet? And that's right up my alley. I mean, I go to a, you know, religious science church and that's what we do. We're like, you know, in metaphysics, we're contemplating everything. What's the meaning of this and what's the karma in that? If I do this, what, what's the karma I'm generating good or bad? So um, I'll leave it at that. Check out Bobby Goldsboro, Bobby Gentry, 
Glenn Campbell, Albert Hammond, and Albert Gold. I've given you five troubadours on the Gypsy Road to check out. Support my work at downpeppertreelane.com. Please buy some cool vintage items in the shop. And like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.